This is the official Supercross Live pre-show fueled by Monster Energy. I'm Kevin Barnett, as always, joined by Jim Hawley. Round 11 here in the house that Peyton built but now has vacated Lucas Oil Field in Indianapolis, Jim. Last week, let's talk about that one, Daytona. An incredible mud fest. And what I, what I wondered about that was it really separated the riders, it appeared to me. There were a few guys that were really comfortable. If you talk about a Wyndham, a Stewart, Baggett, Barsha, those guys. When you talk about riding in the mud, is it mental or is it physical, the advantage that those guys appeared to have? Well, I, I think, Kevin, it's a little bit of both. I mean, mentally, you got to be prepared knowing that you're going to go in there and the conditions are going to be sloppy and you're going to be wet, you're going to be cold and things like that. And physically, yeah, it takes a lot out of you. I mean, you got to remember that the mud is heavy, although the, it rained a lot. So yeah. so it wasn't, the bikes weren't quite as heavy as they could have been. But, you know, you fall down, you get your gloves wet, you can't work the clutch, the front brake, your feet are slipping off the pegs. And not only that, Daytona is just a treacherous supercross track. Yeah, Daytona, you mentioned it as a supercross track. Daytona in a regular year doesn't doesn't necessarily look like a supercross track and certainly with the weather and the flattening of the obstacles it didn't look like a true supercross track it was more of an outdoor track do you like putting that kind of an event in the middle of a supercross championship well, I think so I mean anytime that you can add a little adversity to the uh, championship fight I think it adds to it you know you just can't be a specialist uh, in the domes you have to take it to the outside and you got to remember that uh, you know as we uh, progress with this uh, championship fight there's three more outdoors, and I guarantee you it could possibly rain in Seattle, and like we had snow in Salt Lake before. Yeah, that's true. It's going to take an act of God for it to rain on May 5th at the finals in Las Vegas, but I don't think that'll be. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just the consistency indoors is, is so consistent compared to the outdoors, it's not even, I mean, it's so hard to talk about. All right, let's look forward to this night tonight in Indianapolis, round 11. Supercross Lights East Regional, four races to go. Justin Barsha has won them all. Is he going to run the table? Did he pass his toughest test last week? Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, if they, they, they shorten the race because of the rain. Uh, I think Baggett was coming. I think uh, you can talk to a lot of people, and they said if there was one more lap or two more laps, that Barsha wouldn't have had his fourth of the season. But, uh, you know, it was cut short, and Barsha's got four wins on it. The key is how he's going to rebound here in Indianapolis, knowing that, uh, hey, Baggett's on it now. You know, uh, Baggett found his speed. He found his confidence now, and uh, it's going to be a great race here in Indy. How about Blake Baggett? He's been up and down. He's had back-and-forth nights. Do you think he's going to find a little consistency here? Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I, I think that he knows that we still got a few more on this East Coast. You know, we're heading up uh, to north, uh, up to Canada next week in Toronto, and then after that we go to Houston. I mean, there's still a, a few more rounds that uh, Blake Baggett can get a win, and I know that that's what he wants to do is he wants to win a few of these. Uh, I think the championship might be, uh, that's another question, because he's not even in the top three in the points. Okay, Ryan Villapoto in that Supercross class. At this point, it appears like he could back it in. 44 points over James Stewart. Ryan Dungey, of course, still in second, but now out with that. That collarbone injury. Is this the point where Ryan Villapoto just backs it in? Well, here's the thing about it, Kevin. I mean, you got a 44 point lead. There's seven rounds to go. The difference between first and second points is three. So three times seven is 21. Yeah, he could conceivably finish second behind Stewart and wrap this thing up with uh, room to spare. But uh, I don't think Villapoto's that. I mean, you come from the volleyball world, you got a 10 point lead. Do you back off? No way. No way you stomp on your opponents whenever you can. Well, and that's what I think Bill Apoto is going to do. He's going to go with what got him to this point. Uh, you know, I, I know he wants to get a few more wins, but, uh, you know, it depends on how things happen. I mean, if he gets a bad start and he goes down, then, you know, his mindset is going to be to focus on trying to get up as far as he can. you got to remember, he finished fifth last week in the Daytona. That's the worst finish he's had in the, in the series so far. So, I mean, uh, you know, for him, he just wants to try to get up on that podium at that point. If he goes out and he collects $1,500 from Nuclear Cowboy, and whole shots and running away with the thing, he's going to say, hey, man, I'm going to get another win. I'm going to win this thing. Now, if he gets in a bar-to-bar -bar fight with James Stewart and they're banging on each other and they're lap 10 and 12 and they're just banging on each other, I think at that point, if you're Ryan Villapoto, you back it off and you say, you know what, I, I can finish second tonight. Is that easy to do? Is it easy to back it off in that moment? Because it would seem if you're going bar-to-bar -bar with James, that would be you get the, the kind of primal attack mode that you're used to and the fun of racing. Depends on how bad he pushes in on you, you know. I mean, if he goes in there and, and he pisses you off, and, 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 and that's the key. I mean, if you get into the guy's head and you piss him off, and then he does something that he doesn't really want to do if he under different circumstances. Uh, yeah. It's it just all, I mean, either way, I mean, you know, Indy's been good here to Villa Potter. He won here last year. Uh, I, I remember in the lights, uh, Sipes got his first win, although Sipes is riding the West Coast this year. But also, I got to remember a few years back in Indianapolis when Villa Potter came here, 
and he had a problem in the heat race and he had to come through the last chance to get it in the main event. So yeah. you never know. That's why we enjoy coming to, to the races. All right. Well, we're going to find out tonight in Indy. We'll see if James Stewart can continue, continue his winning ways. Davey Millsap's also on a good roll. Lots more to come here. If you want to get in the conversation with us during the day, Supercross Live on Facebook, facebook.com slash Supercross Live or twitter.com slash Supercross Live and get in the conversation with the live TV coverage, hashtag SX on speed. I'm Kevin. He's Jim. Much more to come from Indy.